and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and had turned to the table. He said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord. And you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are the messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. As we come into this night of storytelling, let us bring our souls and spirits to the Lord and cleanse them this day. Please join me in our prayer of transformation and new life. Holy Drew, tonight we have reached the all too familiar story of the Eve before the execution. While there are times when we relate very well to Jesus in the story, we forget that we have been Judas, Peter, and the disciples. We have allowed ourselves to become a part of someone's story of pain. Our words have pierced another's heart. We have betrayed our neighbor instead of filling this world and another soul with love. Instead of living with the heaviness of guilt, allow us to create peace around us and within us. Invite us to share our repentance and to reconcile with our gospel. May we live into the mandate to love one another as you love us. Through the redeeming love of Christ, God has poured grace upon us. May the mercy of God transform us into bearers of love in a wounded world. Amen. As we come forth into this space of cleansing, we invite you to wash your hands with us. This is a time when we remember the many blessings that our hands are capable of, and we are blessing them together so that they will go forth and be the hands of Christ in this world. Please join me in our blessing and prayer. <coughs> God of blessings, like water, your grace flows freely over us, releasing the shame of the past. Refreshing us for the future. Such restoration is a balm to our spirits. May these hands be a conduit of your love into the world. May they build systems and spaces of care. May they deliver words of kindness across the virtual universe. And may they provide the necessities to our neighbors in need. Allow the bounty of your blessings which passes through our hands to alleviate our break and illuminate beauty as we wander throughout your kingdom. Amen. At this time, I invite 
each person to come up with their life to participate in blessing. same night Jesus gathered disciples around that Passover table and shared with them what we call the Last Supper and the First Communion. Paul writes about it in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 23 through 25. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you. That for the Lord Jesus, on the night where he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it remembrance of me. God 
loves you. And the, the Holy, Holy One, One loves you. you. <clears throat> Open wide your souls. In our, our vulnerability, we reveal our most authentic selves to God. God. May we embrace the mandate of Christ. In Christ's words, we celebrate our love for one another. Divine gatherer of friends, there is beauty in this evening. From tonight's sunset to the embrace of friends, a space like this reminds us of an upstairs room with loved ones. Yet sometimes this annual gathering, as this reminds us of a time of betrayal, of desire, of pain, may the words and rituals tonight be healing salve. May this time of reflection give us pause from the worries of the world. May this space renew our weary souls and this sacrament revive our spirits. Lead us to share the love of God and build God's realm around us. Each time we remember this holy night, we recall the story of the meal. It was on this night of love and betrayal that Jesus took a loaf of bread after he blessed the bread, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends. This is my body, he said to them. Remember each time you break it and eat the bread. And after supper, Jesus took the cup, filled it with the fruit of the vine. He spoke to his followers. This is the cup of the new covenant. As often as you drink from this cup, do this in remembrance of me. Holy Spirit, winds of healing encircle these elements tonight. Surround us with your care, mend the wounds from betrayals, and allow this meal to soothe our heavy hearts. This is the sacramental meal of Christ for all God's children. No matter where you are on the path of life, each of you are welcome at this table.
gratitude to celebrate the space and time with your children. With thanksgiving, we remember Jesus the Christ, the one who shared life with the world, even when the shadows lengthen. Give us strength to enter this world sharing love and grace to our neighbors around us. Amen. As the meal ended, our story transitions to a sadder, darker day. And we move now into our time of Tenebrae, where we share the story of Christ's last hours. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all this that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, for whom are you looking? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to him, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, For whom are you looking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had the sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? Uh -huh. Their officer and the Jewish police 
arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing round it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple, where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then I was sent to bow to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, you are not also one of those disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, the God. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters, so as not so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover meal. So Pilate went out to them and said, 
What accusations do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed over to him over to you. Pilate said to him, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from him, from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him. 
But you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to say and saying to him, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priest and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and the power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone's Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. <coughs> Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about me. He said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to be crucified.
by himself. He went out to what is called <coughs> the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write King of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided him into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture said. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. <coughs> After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. <laughs> The Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath. 
especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified, so that you may also believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was the disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloe, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with spices and linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I may say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, 
that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. As you leave in the shadows of the night, may you carry with you the hope of Jesus' last commandment, that you love one another as he has loved us. 
You are the light and the hope that goes forth from this space. Carry the message to all, and may it bless you on your way. Amen.